Contractions ain't no punk. Do you hear me? I don't, I don't think y'all understand. I don't think I understood. Contractions ain't no punk. It's not that it's like this normal pain, like where you fall on the ground and you hurt yourself or it's nothing you can compare it to. That I think that's the interesting part. Hey y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Nina, your favorite auntie, sister, cousin, and now you can add mother on the end of that because your girl is now a mother and I couldn't be more proud. I am the mother to Hunter Page, born about 11 days ago now, December 14th at 12.07 CST, not a moment late. My baby came right on time. And the birthing story is what I want to share with you all today. What what was my birth story? How did it happen? Was there any drama? You better stay tuned and find out, okay? All of us are doing well, mommy, daddy, and baby, and I'm so happy that things have happened the way that they have. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Nina, and I am a full professor, clinic director, program director. I'm licensed in various areas. I spent years and years in school, my 20s and 30s, working on me. I lost over 100 pounds. I've traveled the world. I've done so many different things. And a lot of times those things weren't popular. You know, everybody was saying, well, when are you gonna get a man? When are you gonna get married? First off, a lot of people need to mind their business, but just to be as an encouragement to others, most of you know that I didn't meet my husband until I was almost, I was like two weeks from being 35. We got married when I was 38 and we birthed our first child that I'm now 40. I just turned 40 in September and I would take it back at all. <laughs> Not one bit of it, babe, because this child is going to get to live and breathe and take in everything I've been able to work for and now enjoy that and pass that on as my husband will be able to as well. And I'm loving that we have bonded as a family and coming through these moments make them so much more rewarding, exciting, and worth it. So today, that's what we're talking about. So let's jump right into this birthing story. But I wanna hear from y'all down below if you had similarities in your story. Let me know down below. And if some of you recently gave birth or even in the past, cause I've had a lot of you write me of various ages sharing those stories, please feel free down below. We are a community here. I love to hear from you. I like to comment and I like to see what you're doing. All right, y'all, let's get into it. I am sharing this story as a motivator, but also I wanna make sure that we are not shunning each other for our own birthing stories that are shared or even mine. This is my life, just like you have yours. We all make decisions that work best for us. That doesn't make them wrong or right. Being informed is what it's about. I have a healthy baby. I'm a healthy mama with a healthy husband and we love the Lord and our community and tribe. So remember that. And that's something I wanna say in this discussion. Yes, I wanna hear from you, but we're not going down the road. You did it wrong and you did it. I, mm. Thank you. Y'all, I'm, I'm a whole mama. I had a baby. The baby ain't no baby no more. Wow, this is crazy. I still can't believe I had a baby. Y'all, <laughs> this is crazy. But that brings me to something and someone, my sponsor who has been a integral part of this channel since the beginning, Warby Parker. And yes, they are the sponsors of today's video. And if you don't know, they offer you everything you need for happier eyes that don't miss a thing. From eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and even eye exams. And you can shop with them online or even in stores, and I've done both. Glasses start at $95, including those prescription lenses, including sunglasses, progressives and blue light lenses are also available and you can also add a pair and save get 15% off when you purchase two or more pairs of prescription eyeglasses or sunglasses and I've never had to break the bank with them they are so reasonable just answer a few questions online and Warby Parker will make the best suggestions for what will fit your face and your style I ordered five pairs of glasses and got to try them for five days for free yet again but y'all I don't even need to because <laughs> I own so many pairs of their glasses, somewhere like seven pair, I believe. And it was so beautiful to be able to wear my glasses at this time where I knew they were gonna help me to see my baby more clearly, my husband, all of us, and be able to be in tune with this wonderful happening. The glasses look good, they feel good. And for the price, I'm always shocked. And being able to have that home try on program where I'm able to wear them for a while and show them to people. I've been sending pictures to my friends just to get their input. It has been amazing. So you know you need to go ahead and try 
our Woodby Parker's free home try on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. And there's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. So try those five pairs of glasses at home for free at www.warbyparker.com forward slash Nina. So if you've been watching me for some years, you know your girl don't get on here and tell all the business. And the business that I do tell is after things have happened because we don't know which way the world or the wind will blow, okay? So I like to be factual and actual in the things that I proceed to tell you all. So one of those things that I did not share was just a few weeks ago, I found out that it was probably best for me to schedule the induction with my doctor. Mind you, I go to my doctor often. I was through this whole process. I had a high risk doctor as well as my OBGYN. And so I was seeing both of them the whole pregnancy towards the end, like every two weeks down to every week. So I am very much an integral part of my care. I am going to say this and I will not say it enough. If you are planning to do any kind of medical procedure, including giving birth, you need to make sure you're a part of the process. No one should be telling you what's going to happen with your body, okay? You should be a part of the plan. And so this was a part of the plan because baby was already flipped, everything was going well. But you know, at my age, it can be a risk for the baby to bake a bit over 40 weeks. And since I was approaching that, we didn't want to run the risk that I would develop preeclampsia or some failures of my placenta with the baby, any of that. We wanted that to be smooth and I was okay with that. You know, I would have liked for labor to happen naturally, but baby was comfortable, honey. She didn't even want to come out, okay? So <laughs> with that said, to continue on down that road, we decided that and we already had a date, a time. We knew how things would go. And I was gonna tell you all for me that worked out because I am an anxious person. I like to know what's going on. I like to know when things are gonna happen. While labor without being induced is exciting and fun, I didn't like sitting around twiddling my thumbs wondering when it was going to occur. So it actually worked out for me. So everybody is different. Not everybody's medical history or life story is the same. I don't shun anybody else's ways of doing this, bringing a child into the world. At the end, all you want is a healthy mama and a healthy baby, okay? So whichever way we got to work to get there, we gonna do it. So after that, and, and having all of my care team, including my husband, who is my hugest advocate, I decided that the induction was going to be important. Everything was aesthetic. Nothing was out of order. I had a very uneventful pregnancy, never had issues with blood pressure, sugar levels, anything not even genetic screening or anything. God is good, do you hear me? So I didn't wanna start <laughs> at the end having problems. So we checked into our hospital in Houston, Texas, okay? And when we got there, it was a really wonderful experience. I could say the nurses were on point, my doctor was checking in, all of that. And so we knew that induction, full induction, wasn't going to happen until the next morning. So that night I had to, for those of you that have given birth already, you know this, um, you have to bathe yourself or shower yourself in antibacterial solutions and think antimicrobial solutions that make sure that your skin is without that bacteria or other things as you're delivering baby, trying to keep you as safe as possible and without infection. And so also they got me started with a little bit of, there's there's medication, Cervidil or Cytotec, and these are meant to ripen the cervix and allow for the cervix to dilate more. Still naturally so, but kind of beating along that process a bit. And I was already a centimeter dilated, 66% effaced, I believe, or 60% effaced. So I was already moving along just a little bit that had been determined weeks before and going to my doctor so often, but baby was still quite comfortable, okay? So the Cervidil and Cytotec, they're still watching your blood pressure levels. They're watching baby's heart rate, your heart rate. There's a lot of things that are factored into that. And so through the night, Night. through the night I slept okay I was doing I, they had me on side attack and they were watching my dilation um, and, and women who have given birth know who uh, and medical professionals out there know uh, how they check your dilation so that was happening often and I was good I slept through the night. Do y'all know I actually slept through some of my milder contractions? They had to tell me I was having contractions. I knew I, I felt something, but I don't know. High tolerance for pain, I don't know. 
work. So they told me, you know, I had the option of calling for my epidural whenever I would like to. My goal was to, you know, not just call for it just to have it, but to actually go through some of those labor contractions and see what I could handle and what I couldn't. And I did move up the ladder a bit, okay? My cervix was ripening and opening up and I was dilating. The next morning, my doctor came in, my OBGYN, and she broke my water. I thought that was gonna be painful and it was not. I've heard people say it's painful and that's the thing. Here's the thing. Everybody's birthing stories is different. We don't shame anybody. The end result that we want, all of us, is a healthy baby. Doesn't matter if you're fully natural, no epidural, if you give birth in a pool, if you give birth in a, a, a midwifery, whatever it is. At the end, you want a healthy mommy and baby. And so when she broke my water, I was like, oh, that didn't really hurt. But it, <laughs> the gush is real, okay? The gush is real. What we did find is my little baby, my little cute baby, she went poo in my belly, okay? She did, but it was fine. She was okay, it was marconium and she was okay. I was okay, so it was interesting to hear and I could see that all this gushing uh, was coming out. That was the weirdest, interestingest feeling ever. I wonder what it would have felt like for my water to break on its own, but even just feeling it that way, I can only imagine. I was one of those people that have the literal, you know, the, the outpouring, okay? Uh, <laughs> And so that happened and it was interesting and my husband was there for all of it, which thank God, um, and active through all of it, thank God. So I didn't feel afraid, I felt very relaxed. In fact, all of the nursing staff and the doctors involved were like, like you're so chill, which y'all know. <laughs> Mama got anxiety, so I'm usually not that chill. But I, something was just very calming. The spirit was very calming when it came to this situation and this process. And probably because I have a great relationship with my care team and my uh, medical professionals that were involved. And I was familiar with the hospital and many other things. So I encourage you through your pregnancy, through any medical procedure, familiarize yourself with the place where that will happen, where it's done, do a tour. I took classes, me and Sean, we took classes in lactation, we took classes in nursery or newborn and labor and delivery. We took CPR, we took lots of classes y'all um so we were familiar with the facilities we were familiar with the staff and familiar with various people that were there so that probably added to uh the sense of angst being very low for both of us we were so cool and it was just us too we didn't do a lot of people in our room or there at all so it was us now moving on after my water was broken not soon after i started having larger labor pains okay big contractions contractions ain't no punk do you hear me? I, I don't think y'all understand. I don't think I understood. Contractions ain't no punk. It's not that it's like this normal pain, like where you fall on the ground and you hurt yourself or it's nothing you can compare it to. That I think that's the interesting part. So it literally felt like something was moving and twisting in my body. And uh, I was handling it. I was handling it, but your girl called for the epidural and I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I know everybody will not share that they chose that route. I did and I'm okay with it. I knew from the beginning that was something I was going to do and I know some of you all asked and I purposely did not talk about it because I know there's so many people either in support of or against it and I get it. Everybody's medical life is their own. I think also I fared well in that part of labor because I still was working out five days a week eating well, taking good care of myself. And before giving birth, I had spent years, 20 years plus exercising, take care of myself, doing all of that. So it literally came in handy. So that's another thing I can tell you, if you are going to say that eventually you might want to have children, make sure that you're taking the best care of yourself possible, whatever that means to you. For me, that was exercising, eating well, taking better care of my body overall, going to my doctor's appointments, getting paps, getting all these other things in order to make sure that my body stayed in order and I can tell you it paid off in dividends. I was able to handle that for a while, got further along in dilation, okay? Almost missed my epidural because there was some other things happening, <laughs> some other emergencies happening. And so I got to sit there for a while as the medications kicked in and I was feeling much better. And here's where the drama 
twist came in, okay? So my doctor is right, like she can walk to the hospital. That's where her office is. So she watches the monitors um, as you're progressing along in labor so that she can know when she needs to come settle in, uh, wash up and scrub up and come on and, and deliver baby. Well, over some time, we started to notice some things and I know how to read a heart rate monitor. A little one, who had other plans, cause my little hunter, okay? I noticed that whenever, well my nurse, nurse really noticed it, whenever I would have a heavy or larger contraction, baby's heart rate would go down. Not good, right? Because nobody wants a heart rate that's going up and down because that can be damaging to your heart. It can be hurtful to the baby and hurtful to mommy. And so with that said, my doctor watched that. I think we did that for like 45 minutes, just watching to make sure that that wasn't progressing. And as it did progress, just slightly my doctor gave me a personal call which was a call between she and my, myself just to make sure that I understood what was going on like I said my care team was never one that pushed anything on me they wanted to discuss and make those decisions together and she told me the risks of the heart rate doing what it was doing with the dips and the contractions. Sometimes what happens with some babies is they don't tolerate labor as well. Does not mean the baby's not strong or healthy. It just means that they don't tolerate labor as well. And I encourage you to know more about those things as well. So yes, this little one was also stubborn, didn't necessarily want to come out. And I think they that she was just kind of, <laughs> iffy about coming into the world. And so my doctor told me it has come to this. I know you do not want a C-section, but that might be the best option right now. And here's why. And I was able to ask questions. I was able to talk to her. And she also said she didn't want that news delivered to me by anyone but her. From the nursing staff to the doctors there, she wanted to be able to be the one to tell me. And I can tell you that made all the difference. It continued to strengthen my relationship and my trust of her. And and though I did not want a C-section, I knew I wanted to leave healthy and I wanted my baby to leave healthy and my husband to leave healthy. And you know, when she said what she said, I, I bit the bullet, cried a little bit and we got it together, okay? And, <laughs> and that led me to, you know, what the next process was, which was making sure that, you know, all my jewelry was off, all of that, because this becomes a whole surgical procedure at that point. And so I took off everything, I, even my, uh, <laughs> even my contacts and everything. So I I was down to glasses. I'll say that that was scary. That was an emotional moment. And I know I'm lightening the moment. That was a scary moment. But because I had trust in myself and I had trust in my care team, it was easy to move forward. And they didn't wait until it was a forced emergency. Thank God. So what I will also say to you is be in control of your decisions. Have autonomy in your medical process. Allow yourself the chance to not just trust the process, but your own process. Mine wasn't like my sisters. It wasn't like any of my family members. This was a me thing, okay? And, and so I'm happy that I was able to reconcile and had time without somebody pressuring me to do something because never once did my doctor pressure me. My husband, he listened, he was supportive, he asked questions, and that was also helpful. But we got ready and we got ready to go. And remember I mentioned it was important to be able to see what was going on, even though when you go through a C-section and I'll explain all this in just a second here, you, you know, you be by the wayside, okay? <laughs> they do give you medications that help to numb you, they help the surgical procedure to move along. Um, and they also move you on to the OR or the operating room. And my OBGYN, thank God, was the one to perform everything. So I had the same person that had seen me throughout my whole pregnancy. So when we entered that OR, y'all, or the operating room, I was pretty much out of it, but I was still with it enough to be able to answer questions, to be able to see Sean, to be able to see my doctor. And my doctor spoke to me directly and the anesthesiologist also did too, which was really like the best <laughs> anesthesiologist I've probably ever worked with and I've had surgery. So I can speak on that. Just very warm, welcoming, funny. Uh, and also when the anesthesiologist saw me getting kind of down, when they did tell me that the 
C-section was probably the best option. He immediately stepped in and told me that his wife had had two C-sections and how they did just fine and how, you know, what are the odds and these types of things. And I, I really appreciated that. Again, I'm gonna keep on telling y'all, especially when black maternal health is so important, make sure that you are in tune with the people that are working on you. This is important. So they kept talking to me the whole time. They were corresponding about what was going on. They told me when I could expect to feel pressure. I don't know if y'all ever seen what happens during a C-section, but baby. <laughs> Woo. Mm. And they have come a long way too. I think they're not as archaic as most people make them out to be. Um, so I will definitely say that my incision scar, all of that, I mean, very minimal. You can barely even see it. But I can tell you, I didn't feel anything during the C-section at all. I felt a lot of like some of the pulling and the tugging and then they woke me to tell me baby was there. We got skin to skin and all of that. Um, Sean was there and just so elated because he was the one that told us what was the gender of the baby. My doctor didn't even know. She opted to not know either so that she didn't accidentally give me the gender of the baby during the process of pregnancy. And so when I tell y'all when I saw my baby. It changed my world. It changed my world. It changed my world. If y'all don't know, I'm adopted. And so for me, this was the blood relative I've never had. Um, and I also happened to be giving birth to this baby. And I remember just seeing her. She's just so beautiful. And I saw that head of hair, which I was born with <laughs> a lot of hair as well. And just to even see that. And then also to see immediately that she looked just like my husband. It was the cutest thing ever. And immediately after, cause I didn't really know how it all worked with the C-section. You can prepare yourself as much as you want to, but in our particular hospital, as long as the baby is fine, they go right back to the room with you. So the baby was in the room. I got Will back to the room and I instantly had time with the baby. Like I instantly wanted to make sure that she was latching and that breastfeeding was coming normally. And it was, and that she was good. She, my husband got to hold her do skin to skin and I got her back to do skin to skin as well so it was a very very rewarding and excellent experience and she stayed in the room like we were in the hospital for three days she was in the room the whole time never went to a nursery never went to NICU my baby did perfectly fine so that part of the story was very much I want to say it was smooth for lack like of better better uh, lack of you know words or better words. Not only that, my blood pressure, all of that stayed pretty good. Naturally with the stress of birth, your blood pressure usually raises a little bit and mine did, but it was never above the level that's of caution. So that was something that was interesting because they kept making sure that I was aware of all my vitals. They kept coming in to take all my vitals. At my particular hospital, they made sure they came in. I think there was a four hour. Well, at first it was like every two hours and then it it progressed to four hours. They were looking at baby. They were looking at me. They took vitals. They took vials of blood. They wanted to make sure that you were good. And that continued on for those three days. They continued to come in in four hour increments. There was always a nurse available to come in to make sure that we, you know, had things to eat, had, you know, the things that we needed within the room. We had a nurse that came in and bathed the baby a whole, they wait like a whole over 24 hours later because they let their vernix sit on their bodies, which helps to protect their little bodies from bacterial infections and other things. If you are at a place that wants to instantly bathe your child, maybe you want to check into what the, um, not hype, but what is the benefits to allowing the baby to bask in the vernix and other things that have protected their body for so long while they've been in your body. And I will say that uh, that experience was so good because they kept me aware of all of those things that were happening. My baby never left my sight. So I suggest if you have a hospital that does that, that that's probably the best thing. I always see these scary stories about kids going off to the NICU and the things that can happen, but I never lost sight of my little Hunter. And Sean was right there with her the whole time and making sure that he was tending to her while also tending to me. The pain level of the cesarean, like I told you all, you have medications in your body that prevent that. I will say it wasn't quote unquote super painful. Like I'm fine, I'm doing good and I'm, 
11 days out. Of course you have like a full eight day, eight week healing process. And I think it's assumed that I'm healing a lot better because I was already pretty much in shape, had really taken care of my core and other things because you can't really move that as much. And you have medications, but my doctor has a very limited amount of meds that they allow you to take because she's not, you know, trying to overdrug you, <laughs> which I can appreciate. So I had to get cleared a week later in order to be able to drive after my medication course. And also um, I had a lower dose of ibuprofen just to make sure that, you know, any dull pains that come along. My incision is healing well. A uh, baby is doing good and had to have nothing really beyond uh, the process of being born. So that makes me happy as well. I will say this whole process has ta taught me so much. I feel like I've had to, even on 40, grow up so quickly. And I'm excited about it though. I mean, since we've been home, Sean and I have really made sure we've taken stations. Of course, I'm breastfeeding, I'm pumping, and we still we do supplement a little bit because baby is growing pretty rapidly. So as I'm allowing my milk to mature, she's still getting a lot from me and also supplementing some. I am learning a lot about motherhood, but also at the the bigger point I'm learning about what family is. The fact that I have a husband that's so involved, that loves his daughter, loves himself, loves me, it makes it so much easier. So that in the middle of the night, when those cries come, or those dirty diapers, or we're hungry cries, or our we have a regimented schedule, every three hours we feed her, every three hours I'm trying to pump, I get behind sometimes, but I'm human. Uh, <laughs> I am learning how dedicated he is to being not just a helper because he's a parent and he's an integral part of this family and that has really helped with my healing as well I feel like the cesarean is really healing so much because my husband won't let me do too much he helps with everything he moves and does everything he initiates lots of things and in fact tries to make sure I have extra time to sleep so I can heal and reminds me that I don't need to be superwoman and I am appreciative and that has really helped overall with this whole birthing process. Now, would I go through this again? There, there we go. Would I go through giving birth again? Absolutely. On a handstand. Absolutely. Nothing that happened to me was that traumatic. And mind you, I went through labor. I went through labor and a C-section. Okay. <laughs> so, cause it wasn't determined until I was further progressing in labor that I would do a C-section. It was not scheduled or, nor was it something that had even been determined that we would do. It, it always looked like vaginal birth was going to happen. But of course you get there and things can occur. And I'm just so happy that I was on my toes. My doctor was on her toes. The medical care team was on their toes and everything worked out. So even going through labor, feeling actual contractions, dilation, and going through the cytotech and all of that, not even making it to the actual big induction part, getting my water broken, starting that, and then going through a C-section, would I give birth again? Absolutely. It has been rewarding, all of that. Now, when I talk about postpartum, I'm gonna do another video on that, but in order to avoid postpartum depression, I'm actually accepting all the resources that I can. I've been going to a lactation specialist. I have gone to my doctor doctor. My baby has started with the pediatrician and I have therapy booked up for the next three to four months already. I'm going to be taking six months off my primary work. And I can definitely say that all of that has added to a great palette of, of life. And this is another reason why I'm actually happy I waited until this quote unquote late in life because I have those wonderful opportunities that have allowed me resources, have allowed me other things. Our family member, Cam, who does meal planning, she meal planned for us for a week and then we're gonna start that back up in the new year where she's doing, you know, three to four days of my meal prepping to make sure that I'm getting back to my healthy status. I've already bought more things for my home gym so that once I'm cleared in the next five weeks, cause my doctor said it looks like I'm gonna be cleared in about six 
well, six weeks from the date of our last um, meeting, so about five weeks, to do all my exercises and the things, honey, so you know we gonna be snapping, <laughs> okay? And I can already see a lot of the water is starting to come off even in my face. So I'm seeing those types of things that are keeping me motivated, but I can see how easy it is to slip into depression if you're not treating yourself well while also trying to take care of the baby because it's, it's easy to slide into just focusing on the baby, but you have to be good in order for the baby to be good or the rest of your family. So a lot of these things I'm doing, I'm doing in order to make sure that we don't go down the road of postpartum depression. I even have our cleaner, it's gonna be coming twice a month instead of once a month, just to give some extra cushioning and padding to that and that we don't have as much pressure on us in the house to do so much all the time. Even though we keep a clean house, it's nice to have someone to come deep clean every now and again. So y'all, that's my birth story. If there's any specific questions that you have, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear what are some of the things that you went through? Was your story similar to mine? Um, honestly, here's the thing. I chose to do what I did and I'm happy with my choice. So remember that. I'm not looking for people to tell me, well, I did it wrong and I did it. I'm healthy and my baby healthy. We good, okay? We gonna leave it like that. My husband is happy with our health too. So so we got the protection and we got God, okay? We got God, we got the family, we got all of that. But I do wanna hear from you, what are some of the things you experienced? And I found out a lot of my friends had similar birth stories. And you don't really understand that until you kind of been through it. And I'm not saying you wouldn't understand it, I'm just saying you don't understand the impact of it. So that has been nice to hear as well. So make sure you leave those things down below. I appreciate y'all for listening today. I love you. I hope you enjoyed my birthing story and hopefully it serves as motivation for you no matter what your age is and what your desires are. You can go after what you want. Yeah, y'all, all right, I'm signing out. I gotta get back to being a mama right now. <laughs> Beautiful brown baby doll, signing out. Peace.